we do bands, we do DJs, we do national acts, we do speed painters, character artists. We do the craziest things. If you think it, we've got it. And if we don't have it, we'll find it. We will not disappoint. That is our promise and commitment to everyone. And have a freezing day. Hi, this is Cindy Durbich, owner and CEO of Breezen Entertainment. And today I'm joined with Michael Durbich on this episode of Breezen Chats. But I must say a shout out to Jesse. She's on vacation and she usually joins us during these podcasts. Lucky her in Mexico. Lucky Hopefully she her. Makes it back. Hopefully tomorrow morning she'll be in. <laughs> on today's episode of Breezen Chats, we will be diving into the world of bridal shows our guest's publications and talk about her journey of where she has come from and what the future has in store for her. Our guest is the Head of Sales and Marketing for Nuevo Bride and Bridal Media Group and also an Associate Publisher for the magazine. She currently has served as the VP of Membership for NACE, which will let her tell you what that's all about, for the Tampa Bay area for the last two years. And prior to that, she was on both the sales and private side of commodities training, trading at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Sun, sand, and family drew her away from a long Chicago winners, and for the last five years, she has been calling Sarasota home. Please give up a warm welcoming for Julie Mackey, my friend, for a few years now. Um, as soon as I met Julie, I fell in love with Julie, and I think you will as well. <laughs> Welcome, Julie. So happy to have you. Thank you for having me. Yes, Thank you. We're excited. So I know sweet. We have uh, tried to set this up a little bit, and we're glad that we were able to get you in here and uh, kind of learn about your journey and everything of where you've come from. So we appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me. It's very thoughtful. Yeah, and sweet. So I'm Julie, happy to be we're here. Kind of just going to start because I know I know a little bit, but not really a whole lot. I was kind of almost forgot that you were from Chicago. <laughs> so tell us about um, where you started, where you went to school, if you went to school, and how you ended up in Florida. So, without giving up too much information on my age, uh, um, it's okay. We're I actually graduated. Yeah, I, I graduated from Duquesne University. Um, with a English degree. Is that right. up in Chicago? Actually, Duquesne University is in Pittsburgh. Oh, so I okay. went to college in Pittsburgh, I graduated with an English degree, and quickly learned that that was uh, four years of, of excellent reading and book writing. And you know, um, my, my, my minor was actually in art history. Wow. So <laughs> really applicable. Yeah. <laughs> but it kind of sort of is, not well, the history, but. You know, it's interesting because I had all these grandiose plans of being um, a professional student. and. Um, uh, in a roundabout way, I, I I have an older sister who was living in Chicago, and um, when I was in college, she um, had some complications with a pregnancy, and she was living in Chicago, and she was married to a commodities trader, and um, she asked me to come and stay with her, and so um, I went and I stayed with her, and I helped her through her birth and pregnancy, pregnancy and birth, mm -hmm. and. Um, her husband took me into the Mercantile Exchange for the first time, um, and I it changed the course of the trajectory of the rest of my life. Wow! Um, in every aspect, yeah. Yeah. So that is—is uh, is it just like uh, the Wolf on Wall Street? Is that the? <laughs> <laughs> well, the that is not my nickname. That is for sure. But uh, <laughs> I can tell you. Are you the Wolf of Tampa? I can't say. You can't say. <laughs> tell us about I'm, that experience, because isn't it predominantly a men-driven? Um, Group? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I was 21 when I actually stepped on the trading floor the very first time. I was hooked instantly. Yeah? Instantly. Um, there's a rush. There's an energy um, within those four walls in that, in that, in that building. And it, it, it was an incredible experience. Um, the Wolf of Wall Street, there was a lot of truth to that. But there is a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of dark, dark, dark. But there's a lot of intense, um, real moments with people because you see them in their rawest form. Yeah. And so there's beauty there, too. Yeah. And there's good people there, too. But... Uh, Tell us sure. the day of a trader. Were you considered a trader? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was a futures and um, commodities trader for the S and P five hundred. Okay. And so tell our because I, I know a lot of people hear about a lot of people have shied away from stocks and and, and making investments and uh, it's I know it's a very high pressure job mm -hmm. from what I understand. It is. Mm -hmm. 
So there's two sides, really. There's the sell side, which is um, where brokers and licensing comes in and banks and 401k management teams and investment um, brokerages like JP Morgan Chase and um, Morgan Stanley and the big, the big mm-hmm. firms on Wall Street. Mm-hmm. That's where I kind of got in on the trading floor. You start at the very bottom. So you start as a runner, and you're clerking, and you're actually running paper orders back and forth from the trading desks to the pits. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know you kind of learn every aspect of the business, and then you you either grow on the sell side, which is you know the bank side, or um, the order filling side, which what, is the sales is that side. That's the side you were on the filling. So side? initially, I was on the sales side, oh, and so okay. I stayed on. Um, I stayed on actually with some um, large banks and large agricultural firms for about twelve years. Wow! And then I thought, you know what? I can I can do this, and if these guys are listening to little old me, I think I should give it a run. Yeah. And so um, I, I had a backer, and I went into the pit, and I started I, what you when call you a market you have maker. A backer, what's that mean? So a backer is somebody that um, will bankroll your bad decisions, okay. if you will. <laughs> they got your back. They, they do. Got your back. They do. <laughs> so um, initially, a lot of young traders, when they start, they have to have um, a clearing firm, okay. which is where all of your trades are processed, okay. and um, you have to have an X amount of dollars in your bank account. And so even if it's a small amount, you you you're better off having a backer in there that's mm-hmm. a more seasoned, wealthier trader with deeper pockets that will say. Look, if she puts this short on and heads off to Mexico and the market, you know, rallies, I, I'm going to write a check for her and cover the loss and we'll get her out. Ooh. And this is a safety, it's a safety, safety net. blanket, safety gotcha. net. Mm-hmm. And how well did you do? Well, I was managed to support myself for a long time. and for 12 years, you said? Oh, longer, yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. How long was that career? Um, well, I went in at 21 and I... I I flattened my last trade the the two days after my son was born. (laughs) So I was 38. Yeah. I I think Julie doesn't want to share her. (laughs) I told her there's no secret here in Breeze and Chat. All right. Or actually, we say what's. What happens in Breeze and Chat stays, but it goes it goes viral. And I'm but sure people are listening. Ages, people are, are, listening. Ages are just yeah. numbers. Ages are numbers. If we had a video, we are going to go eventually go to a, a vlog pad. Uh, What's it called? A, a vlog. A vlog. Yep. And um, and then you would see how beautiful our Julie really is. Oh, you're so If kind. you don't know her, she's inside out beautiful, and oh, um, that's really serious. She really. Um, uh, she's really helped a lot of people in our in in the new industries that, that she's in. So let, let's not get sidetracked. So you were in Chicago, you had a son. So somewhere in between there, you had a son. Yep. And um, decided one day I'm going to Florida. Yeah, I think this was always Sarasota was always our vacation land, and my parents were. Um, so adamant about travel in our lives so we would always take an Easter vacation and we do the Disney World thing in Sarasota and we eventually had a house there and they um, owned a home in Sarasota they did they owned a condo and a uh-huh. rental property and um, we you know we would come back every year so it became a home away from home for all of us and really I mean if you've ever been to Sarasota it's, it's magical it's the beautiful. energy there is awesome um, so I always felt like I was sometimes my better my best self there um, Everything is better with, with some sunshine and some sand. I, I feel like so. it can change 100%. your it changes your attitude immediately. Mm-hmm. Julie, where'd you grow up at? Um, I grew up in Western New York. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I I had have my share of winters. So I grew up on the Great Lakes, right? And then from that area in Buffalo, I went to Chicago. I lived there for a majority so of my adult cold, life. Uh, cold, cold climate. Yeah, some and then we would travel to Denver, and I lived in Denver for a short period of time. And uh, at some point, though, I thought, what am I doing? Because I would always come back. To I would Florida. always come back to Florida. And when my little guy was a baby before he went to school, I would say, um, you know, I'm going to come and visit you guys. I'm not working right now. Take some time off. I'm going to visit, and I'd stay for a week. You know, I'm going to stay longer, open-ended, open-ended. Did your parents open-ended. actually move here at that point? Yeah, they had been gotcha. living here in over Sarasota? 30 years. They were, yeah. They actually ended up north. They're in Tarpon Springs. Awesome. Yeah. They loved um, the lake up there, Tarpon, mm-hmm. and so they built, Tarpon the, they, they built nice. a house on the lake. They built a house on the lake. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> so then I had two sisters that also gravitated to the area, so now they're, the stage was set. So I had one living in Sarasota, one living in, in near my parents. So now, um, so you have lots of family. So here. my yeah, my brother is the only one. He stayed in Colorado. So he's still there. He probably still gravitates down and comes for vacations. Mm-hmm. We've all kind of. My sister that was in Chicago got both of us to move there. So I planted in Chicago. Then we got my brother to move there, and he he stayed for a long time. And, and then you guys left. and then we were like, peace out. <laughs> we're done here. So he moved out to Colorado, and um, 
you know, we get, we get the best of both worlds because Colorado we get to go out there and, and, the and ski and mm, yeah. Frisco in the summer. It's beautiful. Been a bunch of my you need to go. In, in the Colorado, and they say oh, it's, it's phenomenal. My parents actually still go the now. Summer. They'll rent. They'll go back for a month or two when it's sweltering hot here, yes, like now. In Colorado, I don't mm -hmm. know what do they call them in the summer. <laughs> Do they have a name? They probably do. I don't know what that I know, is. I know that, yeah. We hiking birds? I don't know. Birds, what else? Well, that's what they do. My parents are in their 80s and they would go hiking and they love it. They love yeah. being in the mountains, so it's a nice and break. And your parents still hiking at that age? My mom is, yeah. Oh, my dad. Her. My dad is just recuperating from a hip and knee replacement. Mm. So. All that hiking. <laughs> so you made it to Sarasota and Correct. that's where you still live? I do. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So how did you, so you moved here, then mm -hmm. what? Then did, what a job, did a job bring you? So back? I eventually thought I better I better get a job, stay out of trouble, you know. Save your uh, commodity money. Yeah, so right. You left, left Chicago, <laughs> left your job. I did. Just came to Sarasota with it. Well, my job. little guy was so small, I didn't. I kept I kept coming down to visit and staying yeah. longer and longer and longer. And I thought I better I, now it's time for him to go to school. So I did some investigating and I thought, do I want to live next door to my parents? Probably not a great option. Um, I, I'm not a fan of the pop in, yeah. you know. <laughs> And so um, I looked at the schools, and, and Sarasota County has a phenomenal public school system. And, you know, I'm, I'm a really big outdoors person, and I love being on the water. And so um, it was just a natural fit, the schools. And also Sarasota has a lot of arts, and yeah, I'm a huge arts supporter. it's just growing. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. It's a very big philanthropy community. Mm -hmm. um, so there's always a lot going on. And honestly, I think because I was in a big city and, and it's such a heavy crazy industry yeah. it's oversensitized all the time all you know stimulus and it was too much like i think i just needed to unplug so, so you unplugged it really right? unplugged yeah mm -hmm. it's it's awesome <laughs> yeah you unplugged and she went into another stressful industry but it's probably nothing compared to really the stress you know you it's interesting time. because it's it's fast paced and it's changing and i like to be challenged and i think that's one of the th reasons that i do like it so when i sought a job um and it's interesting because now that the commodities market has changed and the mercantile exchange is a lot smaller and, and everything has gone way of the computer and, and the, the T1s, but I, um, it's amazing the experiences that you gain when you don't know what you're, when you're, when you're in, in an environment, in an environment that's, things are just being thrown at you constantly yeah. and you're very, you're very easy. Yeah. yeah, you have to be able you to, adaptable. And learn from your mistake. Yeah, and multitasking. And, and multitasking, really for sure. what you, what mm -hmm. you learn and yeah, and how marketable you are. Because I remember talking to people and saying, well, well yeah, I've done this, I can do this. And, 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 and these are just survival skills, truly, in, in the commodities <laughs> world. And, you know, you're like, you can do all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. This is, yeah. And so um, I met a few people down here, and I was kind of just kicking around some ideas. And, you know, when you have a sales background, um, you know, you, it's apl applicable to anything that you really, truly believe in, that you can you know, wrap your head around it, you can sell it, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and so um, I met some wedding professionals and they were event people and um, they, they actually invited me, listen, you know, we have some great ideas. Would you consider coming in and doing some sales? And I was like, yeah, sure. You know. And is that with your company now? Yeah. So that's How with, um, the company itself is 30 years old. And what company is it? It's called Nuova Bride Media Group. The Media Group. The Media so Group. And um, I was so lucky, um, actually, the woman that owns the company, Beth Winkle, I got a yeah. shout out to her. She's, uh, She's a wonderful person. Oh, she's amazing. She's she's amazing. I can't say enough about her. Um, she actually hired me over the phone. So we had this great connection. We had a video chat. And um, I was sitting in her office, actually, at her desk. And she kind of looked at me on the video screen and said, well, I guess I should offer you a job because it kind of looks like you work there already. <laughs> you were at her desk. I was. Interview. Yeah. Where was she? She's always on the desk. She's um, Canadian. Yeah. And so she actually lives in Canada a good portion of the year. She has a wedding venue up there that um, has gotten great success. And anything she touches, you know, she, she puts her whole well heart into. It. And she's yeah. really, she gets behind it, and including her people. You know, she's yeah. been so supportive in and, and our growth. So I was lucky to, to land that job, and it's five years later, and any crazy idea I come up with, she says, well, all right, let's give it a roll. Let's Run give it a roll. So, so tell us, it started, tell us like what your role was then, and how it has progressed, and where it's going, and how the industry has has changed, and how you have adapted um, for all the vendors, because we participate in quite a few shows. We've done a few of your shows as well. And we've had many, many sidebars and great conversations about, you know, different types of marketing and things. And always thought you were very, very brilliant with your ideas. Thanks. Um, for sure. And I know that you, you, you went, you did Sarasota and the Tampa market. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So share with us, you know, exactly 
where it was and where it has gone and how the changes have occurred. Oh, that's a big, tall order. I'll try and keep it simple. Um, five years ago, you know, with the market, in, in the wedding market as a yeah. professional, you know how much it's changed. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we produce a magazine that's 15 years old and the, the advertisers in the magazine were all wanting to um, get some face-to-face -face time with their with their best prospects who were the engaged couples. So we developed the magazine actually first and the magazine advertisers were like, let's get some face-to-face -face action. So Beth, of course, said, let's have a bridal show. So we did that in Sarasota and um, she did that very successfully. She was the, she's the largest show in Sarasota still. Um, and then when we had enough salespeople, we, we had to move up into Tampa. There was an opening and we kind of took that same theory and moved it up. And as you know, that landscape has changed quite a bit. So, um, you know, and I, I'm the, my, it's my nature to study and learn as you go and you don't grow if you don't do that, right? No. So as, as you learn from every experience, you take something away with you. And we saw the numbers were changing, the attendees were changing, everything was, the landscape was changing. Yes. So we, I, we had to step back, take a really long, hard look at what people were looking for from the vendor side, also right. from the engaged couple side. Right. One of the things I think um, that we've changed the most was um, our outreach. You know, so how do you keep someone that's got, you know, an engagement period that would last 10 months to 18 months is now 18 to 24 months yeah. at best, yeah. right? So now you are you have to be in front of them longer, yes. these these people. It's funny you said we were just at a bridal show and we were one of the, at Innisbrook the other day, uh -huh. and we were getting requests for like late 2021. Mm -hmm. And they're mm -hmm. like two years old. And we, yes. And you, <laughs> and you try You're 12, and, why are you getting married? Yeah, you're trying to... Uh, get in contact with them of their needs and you know they're just not ready yet but like when you're already starting to plan yeah. the wedding so like when is the right time for right them to, we, to we, we spend a lot of time talking with clients about my when I say clients um, new overbride media group is twofold really because we're there to represent and advise and 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 um, market the client which is the vendor mm -hmm. but our job is to really engage a bride or a soon to be engaged woman or couple that will plan their wedding and so we are a resource a couple because it's very exactly diverse. and that's yeah. definitely changed as well Whole bunch, um, who's yeah. paying for the wedding how it's being paid for yeah. the long the length of the engagement period is astounding to me I, I can't imagine that in itself they should, yeah, there's a commitment Craziness. but um, you know I think that what what was what we were seeing was as that was changing we needed to be adaptable as well yeah you know and, and so you, thank you so but that's really Beth getting behind, you know, the, the principle of niche marketing. You know, you can have one product, but it's not enough because as these engagement periods are longer, you have to stay in front of these girls. You have to offer your information. You have to be a credible expert and you have to be presented in a way for a longer period of time so that you would become ir irreplaceable and reliable and you have to build a relationship with these people mm -hmm. through social media and you have to be so reliable many niches from mm -hmm. you know oh, all, yeah. all ages from the millennials to you know uh, second marriages they all uh -huh. are just looking mm -hmm. for some um, way to uh, create an experience exactly mm -hmm. and so with that we took our we took our um, our approach to the marketing and staying in front of helping the vendors stay in front of them longer mm -hmm. so print wasn't enough shows weren't enough digital media really has taken a huge turn you know in the last couple of years so how do you get in front of the girls you present sponsored content through print and and so digital and social yeah digital yeah because when you do that it's a softer touch you know it's not you know call us for free up lighting yeah. it's it's look here's a timeline we're gonna be we're gonna we do a hundred thousand weddings a year here's a, we're the experts we're gonna give you this piece of information if you have any more Educator. questions let me know we'll be here yeah. you know content. right and so content. that is a not huge a piece very soft and right just, uh, we'll be here and we'll retraining be retraining and re-educating the vendors because you know a lot of the vendors that I have the privilege of working with are really creative artistic people which you know I'm an Aries so underneath it all yeah that's me I'm, I'm you know I'm fire but, and but water a lot of them too you know it's a big change because a lot of them have been around a while I know that we've been around yeah um, for uh, well over yes and no 30 years the smart ones <laughs> and yes and, and very fortunate but I, mm -hmm. I saw the light many many years ago that if the adaptable get, stay current with um, IT and digital and 
and technology that mm-hmm. you're really going to be out of the game. Mm-hmm. And, you know, some of the older vendors that you probably represented very sadly tried to educate. I'm sure they're, they may not be in business mm-hmm. anymore or they gave up. They didn't think they could Well, I say this a lot to them. Trust the process. Trust the process, you know, because it, it is, you know, it's ever, it's ever changing and you have to be a student, you know, right back to my commodities tra- training and upbringing, you have to be a student of the market, yeah. whatever market that is you're in. Yeah. You have to learn and be adaptable. Yeah. You know. So, so how did you, what did you change? So you saw the bridal shows, the way that you were doing them mm-hmm. with hundreds of vendors and yeah. big venues. Was that So I found, or? no. Yeah, it's a great question. I actually... We used to do a show with 120 vendors in a convention center, and we would have you know 900 girls show up, and everybody was excited about that. But you can't talk to 900 people in four hours, and they're there because they want to you know have they want to be there for the day, and they bring their tribe, and they're excited. 900 people turn into 1,800 when they bring their plus one. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. and that was great for the numbers, but people were not making connections. And as the type of bride, I hate you know got more. They want an experience, and what we found when we did our big studies was. They are overwhelmed when there's too much information coming at them at once. So rather than pick and choose, they just step back. And so, um, you know, our bride right now is the millennial. I'm sorry, you know, to use that term, but it's just from a marketing standpoint. These are the girls that that, that are in, we're in front of right now and engaging what age with. Group do you think that is? Um, well, it's different. You know, millennials are now almost in their 30s. Right. So about 20. You know, so but the engaged couple here in in this county, and, and when I when I'm talking about Nuova Bride Media Group, I am hyper laser focused on five counties. Yes. What are they? So it's Hillsborough, Pinellas, Manatee, Sarasota, and Charlotte, mm-hmm. and that encompasses a huge amount of very prestigious venues beachfronts and um, you know so the budgets really va- range you know in terms of the spending and the trends from Tampa even from Sarasota are different you know so it's my job to be educated and, and up and current on that so I can share that with my vendors because I really am you know twofold I'm I'm a liaison for the vendors to the to the brides but I'm an advisory I'm a you know, I get a lot of, Couples, yeah. you know, feedback from the girls. You know, when your when your mobile number is inside the insert of your magazine, you know, They're calling don't you don't calling. yeah. I get <laughs> vendors will call me and text me at two in the morning before a show, you know. But the brides will send those emails and you know yeah. text my cell phone just as quick. So yeah, it's, it's it can be taxing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they they know they. They want, I found that every, they want an experience. Yes, and that's what's changed, back to your question. Yes, they want an experience. That's what's changed. And um, so when we did those big, huge pipe and drape shows, I'm not knocking, you know, the process. I I think face-to-face marketing is super important when you're talking about emotional spending. Mm -hmm. But we changed the the format. Mm -hmm. So we cut those shows in half. Um, no more than 50 vendors and we changed that we took that experience note and we thought okay let's let's give them a beautiful venue that they might not go to that they would want to go and see the inside of so where did, and we'll when, do that. when did you make that change what was the first one you did uh, we did a show in Canada like that and okay. I actually um, we do bridal shows in Canada for Beth's um, venue up venue. there so we did uh-huh. a bridal show up there it was a great success um, and then we actually brought it to the Ritz Carlton last year in Sarasota. In Sarasota. Nice. That was a really fun event. And a we very did a upscale venue, which they are not venue. used to doing shows at all. No, actually, they came to me and they thought it would be a, a fun. Um, they would like to mix it up a little bit, and they thought, you know, our, they're trying. They're dealing with the same thing. The you know trying to get. An, to change it up in regards to getting yeah. rides to get in there mm-hmm. to, to see their venue. Yeah, um, and honestly, in Sarasota, there's so many beautiful properties. Um, um, the rooftops, um, Art Ovation has come in, um, the Westin has come in, and they're, you know, Marina Jacks is an old staple, which is beautiful. Behar, you know, can watch these beautiful, yeah. huge yachts come in. Um, and, yeah, I mean, Powell Crowsley, the Ringling. Oh, yeah, so I mean, many. you can find a wedding venue from $5,000 on the beach all the way up to $20,000 yeah. just for the rentals, you mm-hmm. know, when you're talking about the museums. And but you, have you found that the brides? So good for the Ritz. The Ritz is an experience all by itself. Well, it's a flagship, yes. It's a flagship. Yeah. But we have found that most of the brides are choosing anything but hotels unless a hotel gives you a resort feel. What, it, your thoughts on that? I, I think so. I think a lot of this, the Ritz-Carlton, 
you know, and I'm not a representative of the Ritz, and I no, certainly don't do want to put words in anybody's they mouth. Enough, they enough, but they had areas. some challenges because they had some really new comp some some competition when yes. you're talking about a hotel experience. Yes. But nothing and nobody does it like the Ritz. And it's a certain type of bride. But what I think the challenge for them was they came to me with these are our challenges. And I said, well, let's 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 give this a whirl. And we did. And it was well received. And we actually are going to do it again. So the the opportunity to um, to change the way the girls are experiencing a small show is. Um, so what upscale events, what, better venues, smaller venues, more intimate experience. Yeah. And so what are you doing at once they get there? What is making your show different? Um, well, we have a couple of different approaches depending, but you know, what we've been doing lately is what we're calling a zone experience. Okay. And so it's not where a girl would walk in and just go up and down the lanes of the pipe and drape and collect cards and maybe make an appointment if you're lucky and mm -hmm. you know, get your free trial of whatever and register for a prize. I mean, we still encourage all that, of course you know, get as much interaction with them as you can get. Mm -hmm. But what we do is we, um, and this is actually how it came out, was the, the, the venues are the ones that, when a bride gets engaged, where does she go? You tell me, where does she go first? Get a ring. She gets a ring, her fiance. After her she gets fiance. engaged, she where gets does she go? We, we've always seen it's either you booking your photographer for your pictures, or- Oh, for your engagement shoot? Yeah. Okay, engagement fair. Shoot. Mm -hmm. um, then, then what does she do? What, what do you think she I does? I think she's trying on wedding gowns right away. Yep. Bingo. Yeah. Wedding yep. dresses. Yep. Wedding dresses. Yep. Yeah. And so what, uh, this is twofold. So with the magazine, when we, when we, when we have laser focused marketing, what I'm talking about is I take this magazine and I put it inside of every dress shop so that when that girl goes in, she sees our name, she sees our ad on the back for the next show. She comes and we invite her to follow us in our digital and social. And so we placed our name and our product in front of her four times, hopefully. So when she's sitting at that dress shop and she goes to another dress shop and she goes to another dress shop and she sees we have four issues a year, she'll collect them. She'll she'll start interacting with us and usually she'll, they'll you know, like us on Facebook and you know the whole thing. So my goal is to get that magazine in every beautiful dress boutique so that they can walk yeah. in. So in five counties, I will, <laughs> Beth can attest to this, you know, I thought I must have spent, I don't know, three, four weeks in my car, stack of magazines, handshaking, business cards, stack of magazines in every dress shop in Pinellas, Hillsboro, Sarasota. And, you know, we were initially in Sarasota and, and Manatee anyway, uh -huh. but getting that recognition, it took about three years to really get well, you know, grounded here in yeah, in the really. in the market where girls were like, oh, I love that magazine. Where now I get a hotel in downtown Tampa calling me and saying, hey, um, so and so came in for a tour and I didn't have your magazine. She was looking for it. Could you have it dropped here? That's awesome. It is awesome. Don't yeah. tell me print doesn't work. Yeah. You know, that to me is niche marketing, and that's why that's what gets me excited about it because yeah. it's a hand in hand process. So when it, when a when a beautiful ex, uh, established venue like the Ritz can say, oh, I think that we should try this because here's our challenge: we're competing with other with other hotels and whatnot, and we need to know we need to tell brides that they can have a wedding here for less money than what they think. Mm -hmm. What they think. It's what they perception. think. So we need to get them in. Yeah. So I'm like, well, let, let's get them in. Let's see if we can do that. Did you use the main ballroom for that? We did. We actually used the. Um, I don't know if you saw the pictures on Facebook, New Over Bride Meet uh, Magazine. But if, if you didn't, you should. I have, but we I created a. To know where they can still probably just see that online. Oh yeah, it's on our Facebook page. And um, what we did was uh, we did a 360 gallery in the um, pre-function space of Very the Ritz, nice. and we had a phenomenal um, group, a production group that I worked with called Weber Scenic. Mm -hmm. um, they are actually based in um, this area. They're phenomenal to work with. Um, Jeff and Christy Weber, Weber Scenic, mm -hmm. they're awesome. Um, we created a beautiful entrance and um, we pin spotted, Jeff actually pin spotted all the dresses and I had all the dress companies come in and I each gave, you know, gave them 10 spotlights each. Mm -hmm. And so the girls could get a glass of champagne, they picked up an hors d'oeuvre and before we let them into the space, we actually had this um, 360 experience where they could actually walk around. There were no models. There was no one talking to them. It was just walk around and see the dresses. Dresses on mannequins and mannequins. Yeah. yeah, they yeah. loved it and it was great and it looked beautiful and the lights were flush. It was it was wonderful. So that was your second one. So, so that was up 
in Canada. Yeah. So then the Ritz, what we did was we used their their um, their preferred you know vendors. We really just pooled them together to create an experience. Yeah. So we had some genius planners in there, and they pooled their you know florists and um, entertainers, and they created these beautiful and inspiration galleries. As so as the girls walked in out of the pre-function space, they had these beautiful um, views to see. And so it w it's, what I love is when creative people collaborate like they that, and they created beautiful things. Yeah. Beautiful. Full so displays. Get a, dress, get a person doing the dresses. Someone taking pictures. You had models. On, mm -hmm. So models. each little area Art had music. its own creative space. We had um, some makeup artists. We had some, you know, doing space, and we had um, custom cocktails for them. And well, that is what a wedding you know. is. You're pulling a bunch of different vendors to create one big yeah. experience. Mm -hmm. How you envision your day? Yeah. So awesome. And and it was. I was really proud of that body of work because it yeah. took a lot. <laughs> it really did. And the and vendors were spectacular so to work you're with. You're getting ready to have your next show. Is yeah. Right? Coming mm -hmm. up this summer. And mm -hmm. that's a little about that so it so we took that theory of the venue right. being the one because when I asked you where do they go mm -hmm. they go to the venues and they go to the dress shops first so I, I can tell you that the amount the percentage of, of photographers that are bringing a venue a new bride is probably zero percent right. um, and so the onus is really on the venues to produce that new bride newly engaged couple that's then going to start oh what's your preferred vendor list and they're going to create you know, based off of what the venue has given them. Mm -hmm. You know, who are your caterers? Who are your photographers? Who do you like the best? Who shows up? Who doesn't give you food poisoning? You know, all those things. Yep. So it's the dress shop and the venue that really that's the big, the, the big, the big yeah. push. Mm -hmm. So we, w with these new shows, what we're doing is we're creating an experience. So we're taking a venue out of its out of its actual um, location and we're bringing them in and we're, we're calling them a zone. So they're partnering with their preferred list. So other venues as well. Yes. So, so this next show's where? So this next show will actually be at the St. Pete Yacht Club. All right, great. We Let's did this in Sarasota. A Let's oh, skate. well, this show will be July 14th okay. at the St. Pete Yacht Club from okay. 1 to 4. Okay. Um, we will also be doing the same. Shannon. Yes, we love Shannon so much. She's, she's amazing. She's been, she's, a, she's been there for a long time, and she's really good at what she does. She's, she's so professional. She really is. She's really great. We enjoy working with her. Um. I really enjoy working with the Yacht Club. It's a beautiful piece of property too, and 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 you know um, we did a show with them last year. But this format is new. So what we do is we take our clients who are the venues, mm -hmm. and we bring their 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 preferred vendors with them, so that you know. And I tell my vendors this: forty percent of your new business is going to come from your vendor relationships and your referrals. So they have to be solid. And when we reach out to um, the vendors on behalf of the venues, they're more than happy to come and say, yes, you want to support them. You know, you want to be there because this gives the brides um, a real look and feel. And, you know, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't make the photographers afraid because they're like, if, if they connect with those girls on a level, it doesn't matter what venue they've chosen, that photographer is local and they're mobile, yeah. right? Yeah. So right. Same, with the, same with the other, um, you know, vendors that are providing a service that they would pay for. They may see it at one vignette. Exactly. And they can mix and match and they know that. Yeah. Sense. So very yeah. Cool. And the idea it. really is just to have it interactive. We love to have pop-up music. We like to have bands. You know, we've had, I, I have to say that Jonathan Cortez on Ace in the Hole, mm -hmm. he is a f super talented singer and um, he's, he's been, been doing our MCs for, yeah, he's been doing our MCs. Mm -hmm. He's fantastic. He's got the voice of an angel too. I don't know how he does it. So he's really yeah. talented. It is. He is yeah. a super. Can sing. It's a gift. He is. Yeah, he's great, and the girls love him. Um, so we will um, have him MC as many shows as we can. Yeah, you know, that's he's perfect. great. That's perfect. So, so that's your next show, and then um, mm -hmm. you're going to see how um, just continue taking back and forth from uh, Sarasota to the Tampa Bay area, or does that make a difference, or is whatever you decide when you find it, you'll know it. You know, yes, we are a very small niche company. We and Beth always says we are small, but we are mighty. Well, you know, we I get it say. done. Oh, you say that that's too. Well, you and she are sister soul sister, sisters soul for sisters sure. Are, we're probably exactly <laughs> the same age or something. Like that. I will never tell. Um, she would fire me. She would fire me. <laughs> I would fire my, my girls. Know. My people know. Oh, uh, I tease her all the time. Like, I'm just going to change my last name to Winkle. No, 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 no we'd be a bad thing. <laughs> no, she's great. So that's exciting. So tell us about NACE. Tell our listeners what NACE actually is. 
Well, I've known Not everything, mention, you know. I, I was just going to say. So, uh, Cindy is pr the, a longtime, very proud member and an awesome supporter of NACE, which is the I chartered the chapter. A chartering member. A chartering member. I think me and Ivy Peterson, we chartered it. Wow. And started it, uh, what's it, 30? It's 31 years, 31 years now. Exactly. Mm -hmm. In Tampa, it's but actually Tampa. NACE is 60 years old. 60, but the Tampa Bay area. Mm -hmm. yeah. 60 years I old. I love it. It's been great, and it's hats off to you, actually. I'll get it on recording. You know, it was Cindy that met me and said, it was your mom that said, <laughs> you need to get involved in NACE. You, 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 you should be the membership person. You're doing a great, you are outreach. You're out there in front of people all day long. You should really do some so good. somebody listen to her. <laughs> <laughs> or us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's been a wonderful experience. So if you don't know what NACE is, it's the National Association for Catering and Events. And, um, it was, that's a change. It used to be catering executives. Okay, well that makes sense because yeah. it's now all encompassing to yes, event professionals. So it, was great, it was a great change on, mm -hmm. on national to do that. Yeah, it was really. Yeah. And then what's your position with me? So this is my second year I'm serving on the board as the VP of membership. So it is, it's been great and I recommend, you know, if, if you want to see change in your own Industry. industry you have yeah. to roll your sleeves up and be involved you can't just sit back and be criticizing others you know I feel like so with your dental nudge you know I absolutely went in there full full throttle and because you do nothing less than full no throttle. I don't really see the point in that <laughs> if you're not good and tired at the end of the day what did you do yeah, you know yeah, I like that. yeah. yeah it's yeah. true it's true well I think it's been great I think that you know um, it, it's a it's a volunteer position on your board thank so. you for saying it's yes. <laughs> you guys put a lot of time and effort. I know that uh, uh, I may, I um, have my interns. I pay for my interns membership because so many people don't realize that if they're a student, it's a a fifty dollar rate opposed mm -hmm. to four hundred and some odd dollars. Three ninety five on your own. So it's three ninety five. Three ninety five. Yeah. And so it's just a great experience. So I, I usually have them join right at their senior year. That's smart. Um, and just to get exposure to see if they really want to be in the industry. Yeah. Um, and then it's a national organization. Yeah. So they love to see that the newer people that are benefiting and, and because the educational the really piece. Them. It's yeah. educational. They've got lots of education. So um, and and it's it's a great networking opportunity to see a lot of build your relationships. Exactly. It's about relationships. Yep. Um, you say you get to know your venues, and um, it's important. So, a lot of it this is. is one group that they are coming out. I know that um, it, it it's a lot of hard work, and we thank you and the board for thank that. Thank you. We're and excited to be year, there. You guys are creating a lot of new, bringing a lot of old back throwbacks. Yeah, coming back um, with the new board that's come in, and. Uh, you know, and we thank you. It's very exciting, and I think that you have to keep it exciting because companies want to know that if they're paying for their their um, managers and directors to go to something, that there's some education involved in it, and right. that they are getting. I don't know. Do we do educational? Um, I know, like in Meeting Planners International, they have CPU. They do, and they let they do, and they have a whole program with this certified planners. Yes. which I think you know, I'm I'm in the media industry. I'm not sure, you know, I don't need to be a certified planner, but I love the um, opportunity for people to have study their craft and yes. be, and you know, you throw some initials behind you 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 know somebody's yes. name on a business card. It's not just a bunch of numbers or a bunch of num it's letters. It's education, it's education, and that says something about the person that they're committed. That they're committed in, into their industry. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't want to knock anyone that's planned a wedding for a friend and opens a business, you know. But I feel like you need to really, you need to educate yourself no matter what you're doing and to commit to that, you know. 100%. So I, I love that about NACE that they do that. They do a national conference um, yeah. that that people go to, but they also for the board every year they do an indoctrination. They do a, um, at the beginning of the year they do a conference just to to get everybody on the same page, which is great. You know, so the national board comes in. It, it is a true commitment. And yeah. you know it's it's ran by a national board. Yeah, and if you if I've ever served on a board before, it's it's a formal it's a formal um, a commitment. commitment yeah. You know, it really is. It's been fun. I, I I I didn't think I'd be on the board for two years. That's for sure. Yeah, and I think it's good that you know that they. I don't know if you if we have it any longer. It used to be an incoming president. Yeah. Well, AJ. Yes. That's so what that Alan was. Can have training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that wasn't how it always was, and some people stayed a really long time. But I think it's. I think as you as these as this industry changes, I think it's important that the board moves on, 
and new blood comes in. I love that. And that you... Um, We're ready for you whenever you're ready, Michael. Yeah, Michael. <laughs> and I know that uh, Gina's gotten a little bit involved, like in registration. I and, love that. She's yeah, great. All the girls bit. here are so, wonderful. Thank they you. Are. Thank you. So tell us, um, what's the next five years look like for Julie Mackey? Well... Don't tell anyone. Work and play. Work and play. We're traveling. <laughs> you and work and hard, play hard, really. I mean, my, my little guy is nine. He's in school. Um, and so, uh, so really, I, job we do. it really is, I, but it's the most rewarding, you know, I, I love that, you know, he's nine and he's still, uh, Hey mom, come on in here. And I, I'm not ready to get up yet. I'm like, what, what's up? Come on in here and snuggle me. I, I mean, oh, come oh, on. Oh, who yes. can't say no? To, who can say no to we that? We do this, this silly thing in our house. We go ding, 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 group hug. <laughs> and everybody jumps on the bed. That's sweet. And a 30-year-old and a 28-year-old. Don't judge. I'll tell you. I love it. And, and, you know, I think he's nine. So in five years, what, he'll be 14? Um, so I'm hoping he'll still think I'm cool, you know? Yeah. I hope so. We have a lot of laughs together. Um, he's he's um, starting to get into music. And, yeah, and you mentioned he's in a band or he, Something. He is. Yeah, he is. Yeah. There's a place in Sarasota called the Music Compound, and their whole theory is lessons in a group. And so the kids have an opportunity to play in front of an audience when they get it together enough. And um, what's his instrument? Of he choice? is a drummer. Cool. I know. I know. I know. He's uh, and he really he's hilarious. So we enjoy that, and I I do. Um, is he doing electric drums? Has he gone? No, he's he's traditional? he's actually in a traditional drum nice. set, nice. and um, you know, I'm a sucker for so yes, I yeah. know, I know, yeah. I'm a sucker for the drums. I always have been, you know, <laughs> follow the dead for many years, and uh, cool. love me some drum circles in Sarasota as well. Yeah, I love drum circles. I know. Yeah. So it just seemed like a natural fit, and when he said he was interested, boom, I was on it because I thought it was a great thing for him, but. Um, so the next five years is going to be a lot of water sports and kayaking and <laughs> drum concerts and um, and, 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 and yeah, Browns you know, and working and, uh, harder to to bring it for our vendors and well and tequila, so and tequila. <laughs> and a couple of nice big ice cubes. Yeah, well, we can't agree more. But we have just loved having you on. I just love, you know, Michael, especially since he hasn't heard your story. It's always nice. You run into people over and over again. <laughs> right. And you wonder, do they really know what I do? Yeah. Like, you know, 30 years later, like, someone goes, oh, I didn't know you did that. So it's crazy. Not, not even that. You know. Know, South Tampa is such a small community. You think a lot of people think everyone's from here. You know, you mm. don't know that the journey they took from New York to Chicago to end up finally in Sarasota. Yeah. Or, it, it's it's a fun thing because no one knows I'm a commodity, so I was a former yeah. commodity yeah. trader. So and they're going to know and they're going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I took it some of that, but I'll tell you, you know, it's funny because the stories, the people always want to know the stories. Yeah. And I can, yeah. I can tell you stories, stories that make your sailor yeah. blush. I think that's what... <laughs> <laughs> what people and that's what's that relationship building yeah it's just relationship yeah. people really do want to do business with people they like and make them feel good and uh, I think you are doing a great job in the industry here I think for a short period of being in the area you you found your niche and made a lot of good friends you said you you uh, I have been really fortunate, very yeah. fortunate. yeah so um, <laughs> keep loving that boy of yours and that prioritizing what's priorities yeah you know? family and as they for get sure a little older so maybe your time on some boards paid it's good timing and then that and then this is going to get very busy for you i hope you so. have to drive your son around oh <laughs> soon <laughs> he'll be driving six or seven years right or oh, no, no. Oh, four years He's how old? Well, he's nine. Nine, and we got so some a few time. years. But <laughs> uh, as we always say, we thank you so much for coming in. And um, please uh, listen to our podcast. Uh, go to Breeze and Chats on lots yeah, of You can listen on YouTube, podcast. Hopefully, if you're listening to this, you know where to find it. Yeah, you'll know already. where to find it. And but then, uh, Julie, why don't you tell them uh, some of your social media handles that they can come find you at if you know them. If not, we will we'll actually we're gonna post, post them. them. We'll, well post thank them you. and also a link to her uh upcoming bridal show uh july 14th as well right for uh the brides that are listening that want to go check out some vendors and some yeah. venues and, and i think it's very fairly i think it's practically free i think it's ten dollars a person it is to, in advance uh, if you you know if you go online you can actually register with the road bride and it's actually free yep person and you just um, need to register so please check check out one of these new shows we're gonna uh try to step by for sure and as Michael, I, and Jesse always say, have, have a breeze and day. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Awesome. Good. Fun. I just want to get a quick picture of us. Oh. Yeah. How uh, long was that? <laughs>